Hello, I'm Jennifer Gladstone, host of our series, America's Retirement Future. In this episode, we'll take a deeper dive into how private equity has fueled state pension fund growth and what benefits it has to its members. Here to discuss this topic is Johara Farhardier, Executive Director of the Illinois State Board of Investment. Hi, Johara. Welcome to the program. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you for having me. So the Illinois State Board of Investment has more than $20 billion in assets under management and more than 165,000 beneficiaries. Tell us who they are and are they typical public servants who benefit from returns generated by the Illinois State Board of Investment? Well, um, I wouldn't say they're typical. We really do manage a wide range of assets on behalf of the public servants of Illinois. So for example, we have state park employees who maintain the natural resources here in Illinois. There's frontline workers that take care of the developmentally disabled at the state-run care facilities. We even have public health officials who are out there working around the clock, helping us stay safe throughout this pandemic. And of course, those at the Department of Commerce even and, and Economic Opportunities Division, where they're consistently distributing grants for those small businesses here in Illinois, especially during this environment. So we're really proud to be able to shepherd some of these assets in retirement savings for these public servants who've dedicated their careers uh, to us here in Illinois. So especially in, in the environment we're currently in, so really proud to be managing the assets on behalf of these employees. Private equity investments for the Illinois State Board of Investment generated a 10-year return of over 16% after fees in 2020, which is the highest private equity return for any public pension fund, according to a recent report from the American Investment Council. So why have private equity investments for your pension fund been so successful? Um, I would say, you know, we've spent a lot of time looking back and reflecting to make sure that we continue to do it right. And, and really, the truth is, we all know when investing in private markets, but specifically even private equity, manager selection is key. So investing with the right private equity fund managers. When we did an analysis on our portfolio, we looked back in about 61 percent of our commitments made in private equity were to first or second quartile in uh, private equity funds. And then for about 14% of the portfolio, we're in fourth quartile funds. So majority were in the top sort of quartile that are outperformed. So that on its own is gonna generate attractive relative returns. Um, you know, I, I do have to pause here and thank, you know, the investment team, specifically Scott Richards, who played a significant part in overseeing that private equity portfolio, as well as our partners, um, Franklin Park and Hamilton Lane, who really helped us build this robust pipeline. We even looked at vintage year and even strategies, but at the end of the day, the significant driver of the returns was manager selection. So in March of 2021, the Illinois State Board of Investment announced that the pension fund would increase their private equity allocation to 9%. What role should private equity investments play in a diversified portfolio for public pension funds? Um, and in the simplest form, private equity at the end of the day should be a return enhancer um, to a diversified portfolio. Um, you know, as certain pension funds can benefit from the unnecessary liquidity in the portfolio, um, they'll be able to provide that capital to sort of constrained businesses within private equity and hopefully be able to earn a premium over the public equity markets. That's our goal. Um, we all have a certain investment objective and investment return that we're trying to achieve. And I think uh, asset class classes like private equity are, are necessary to be able to achieve those targets. As the executive director of the Illinois State Board of Investment, what advice would you give to young women seeking to enter your field? So I, I do have a, a great piece of advice that I think would be relevant to any sort of young person out there um, that, that was given to me that I think would be meaningful to sort of share here. Um, and it's really that we're all going to go through certain adversities and challenges in life. And that it'd be important to build a toolkit so that you can help manage through those crises or difficult situations, um, ultimately, ultimately not allowing them to sort of dictate your future or, or have those adversities define who you are and to try and find the opportunity in that difficult situation. Because during it, it's going to be difficult to build that toolkit. So it's important to be prepared for, for those situations. And to lean on family and friends and colleagues you trust at the end of the day to help support you. I would also maybe add um, that, 
you know, to always sort of ask for what you want, especially in your career. Um, you know, it's rare to be given things. Um, so not to be afraid to be rejected or to hear no and to perhaps not to have fear um, get in the way of your decision making. And then the last one is to sort of stay curious um, and ask a lot of thoughtful questions. How has your organization worked to be a leader on diversity and inclusion, both internally and the industry at large? Thank you for asking this. Um, in Illinois, I really believe um, we're in the forefront here in advocating for diversity. Um, there's the state ultimately sets goals for each retirement system with regard to the utilization of minority and women-owned investment managers. But as well as the use of uh, the vendors and service providers and staff diversity. So it is being, we crafted a diversity policy which holds us accountable to the state goals, but we try to go above and beyond that. So 39% of our total portfolio is committed to minority and women-owned firms. But in addition, we talked about is these private equity performance. And not only are we proud of that performance, but we're also proud that 24.1% of that portfolio was committed to minority and women-owned private equity fund managers. So we're really proud to be able to show strong evidence that a major pension fund can achieve top-tier performance uh, while maintaining a strong commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's important for us to not only focus on this internally, but for um, in regards to your question about industry at large, we worked really closely to partner with BlackRock, uh, a large asset manager that manages over $7 trillion in AUM to build a diverse broker council so that we could advocate for the use of minority and women-owned broker dealers in the industry. And when talking about ISB, yes, we're a large pension fund worth $24 billion in AUM. Uh, and it's even more critical when talking to a large asset manager that has seven trillion in AUM. So we're we're glad to be able to partner with these asset managers and hope to create serious and sustainable change in the financial industry when it comes to diversity equity. Tohara, thank you so much. It's been great speaking with you today. Thank you for the time. I'm glad to be here. And I hope you all join us next time for our series, America's Retirement Future.